We'll start this last session with Dr. Tom Bird. He's going to speak about the young athlete hip problems. Thank you. Thank you all. Well, Glenn Dorch contacted me a couple of weeks ago and said, well, what are you going to talk about? And I'm like, well, I don't know. Can you send me the program? And he sent the program. I said, well, this is a no-brainer. If Dr. Andrews is talking about why are so many of our young athletes getting injured, I'll do what I always do, which is follow on his coattails, and I'll talk about uh, young athletic hip problems. Now, as a backdrop to this, back in 2003, I was running the course at the Learning Center in Chicago, pontificating to anybody who would listen about a professional tennis player with a labral tear, and I was going through this, and this guy in the audience stands up and goes, that guy's got FAI, he's got this bump, that's why his labrum's torn. I remember thinking, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Fortunately, I was smart enough to think it and not say it, because uh, I'm thinking, Man, I'm not whittling on the femoral neck on my athletes and watch them have a spontaneous femoral neck fracture. So I kind of came into this FAI thing sort of kicking and screaming. Well, gradually, we, some of the more obvious ones, we tried reshaping the head and neck junction. We weren't seeing catastrophic consequences. And eventually, the pendulum sort of swung from worrying more about the consequences of the bump to worrying more about the consequences of neglecting the bump. So we started to address it. We then got some good techniques for restoring the labrum. But it took a while for me to get the courage to inflict this operation on a young kid. This is my first uh, child in 2008, a 14-year-old gymnast who's clearly getting into trouble with her left hip. She's got a pencil lesion, an acetabulum. She's got an asymmetric cam lesion. She's lost 30 degrees of internal rotation of her left hip compared to the right. And this is the sort of case where the pendulum has swung. I worried more about the consequences of neglecting this little girl more than I worried about the consequences of the surgery. Now, as a gymnast, she wasn't going to the Olympics, but her father was a janitor and her mother worked at the post office, and gymnastics might have been her ticket to get a college education. We got our 3D CT scan, and this was back 2008. Insurance didn't cover FAI, so it was a cash-only business, which was kind of the greatest time of my career. I did this girl for free because I didn't want anybody thinking I was profiting off operating on these little bitty kids. But this is that first case. You can see the articular surface is failing consistent with the cam lesion. The labrum's in trouble. We mobilized the os acetabulum, which we removed. And then that allowed us to just reshape the acetabulum and put in a couple anchors and restored the labrum. Then we go to the periphery and there's this big old bump and it's amazing how uh, disturbingly normal the cartilage over it can be, but all that's gotta be removed to see the cam lesion. You can see she had partial physeal closure, part of the physis was still there. And we just corrected the cam lesion, restoring the normal concave relationship that should exist at the head and neck junction. And then here's simply our finished product. And again, you can appreciate the way the uh, physis sloped off. Now, in terms of full disclosure, I actually did get compensated for this case because the father was also a welder, and he made this lamp out of surgical instruments, which still sits on my nurse's desk today, uh, one of my most prized possessions. The problem is, in today's world, we're seeing more of these kind of cases. I'll do this kind of case every week. 15 or 16-year-old girl brought in by her mother, three-year history of hip pain. She's not dancing. She's not cheerleading anymore. She won't go shopping because her hip hurts her. She's got some pincer morphology. She's had, had three stone cold normal MRIs, temporary relief from an intraarticular injection, and we'd use cortisone to try to see if that would help. And you'd say, well, why on earth are you putting cortisone in a young child's hip? Well, if the next step is going to be this big whack I'm going to put on her hip, the idea of trying cortisone one time doesn't sound like such a bad alternative. So we go in, and here's her labrum. It hadn't torn, but it's draped out over the pincer lesion, getting crushed. And the labrum has a very rich nociceptive fiber innervation. Lesions of the labrum hurt like crazy. So in this case, we're able to mobilize the labrum, correct the pencil lesion, restore the labrum uh, with a high likelihood of reducing her discomfort. But certainly our ultimate hope is that we can improve her long-term outlook. But we just have to be very cautious about trying to imply that we can actually alter the natural history of this disorder. I believe we can, but it's hard to say in a scientific fashion. Now, for me, taking care of grown-ups is simple. If they complain enough, you can operate on them. The problem with kids is you worry about what the symptoms mean uh, for future problems. And to expand on this a little bit, with FAI surgery, we're weighing the consequences of increasingly complex, increasingly invasive procedures, 
necessitating more protracted, sophisticated rehab strategies against the conceptual concerns of the natural history of this proposed FAI process. And the reason these words are important is remember what Dr. Bergfeld told us on Thursday night about the orthopedic triad. Some really smart people may have led you down the wrong path in times in, in the past, so just need to be cautious about these exotic procedures that we're doing. Now, in the skeletally mature adults, the likelihood of symptomatic improvement is what takes precedence, certainly with some optimism that the procedure may positively influence uh, what may often be an inevitable progression in the future, but the best shot they have. But with kids and adolescents, we worry about the symptoms being a warning sign of future consequences and will cautiously advocate for earlier intervention before the symptoms become progressively severe. Now, not too many years ago, insurance companies wouldn't cover FAI if you're under 18 years of age. So we did a study looking at FAI in adolescents under the age of 18, a control group compared to an adult population. We found FAI correction works quite well in adolescents, slightly better than it did in adults. But the other observation is that 96% of the adolescents were participating in athletics. So you don't get into trouble with FAI as a kid unless you're involved in athletics. And the way I look at it is FAI is kind of like the front end of your car being out of alignment. It leads to some uneven tread wear. And how quickly and severely the tread wear occurs depends on your driving habits. And a lot of these kids are driving their hips like Porsches and not like Priuses. Now, we subsequently looked at our results of arthroscopic correction of FAI uh, looking at adolescent athletes as a specific subgroup. And what we found is 97%, almost all of these kids get better. But there's a difference between getting better and better enough to return to the rigors of their sport. Our return to sport rate was 86%. But if you mine that a little more deeply, actually only five out of 116 hips were unable to return Six of them simply wised up and thought maybe it wasn't such a great idea to go back to that sport and chose not to. And five of them had just completed their high school career, so didn't return at that level. So the numbers may be a little better, but for my purposes, when I'm talking to patients and families, I quote the 86% because I don't want to be too optimistic about what we may accomplish. So in closing, FAI is by far the most prevalent problem for which children and adolescents undergo hip arthroscopy. The problem really doesn't have to do with sports. Sports didn't cause the problem, it just brought it to a head at a younger age. And I tell them, listen, if you were lazy, this might not have started to bother you for another 10 years. But it is important that it's not just about sports because the treatment is not just about return to sports. The treatment is about a young person with a lot of years ahead of them and trying to make sure we're giving them the best possible outlook for the future. I certainly wouldn't write off sports, but it's not the principal reason for subjecting them to these operations. Thank you very much.